normally don't do two makeup videos a day, but after seeing my makeup today, my husband was like, oh, but I thought you were going to use the makeup I just bought you. I was like, oh, I was going to do that tomorrow. And he was, oh, could you do it today? I really want to see it. So I was excited. So he bought me the Jurassic Park um, collection from Profusion and he surprised me. It was so sweet. He knows I really like Profusion and he knows I didn't have that one. So he did. A, he decided to surprise me for Valentine's Day and I didn't know about it until it got here. Big box. So cool. And it comes with this, this color, this lipstick color that's kind of, kind of a dark greeny color that I think kind of looks like baby poop. And he's like, I bet you could do something with that. He's like, do something with this. So I'm going to wash off all my makeup. And then I'm going to do that. These makeup wipes um, are really nice. They're cheap too. I love getting bargain stuff that works well. So you're not like spending a ton of money. It's a Neutrogena makeup wipes. Look how well it takes it off. Just so fast. Although it does feel kind of soapy to me so I always rinse my face off afterwards okay so and of course the kids are all up now because it's like two o'clock in the afternoon we celebrated the twins birthday today their birthday is actually tomorrow where did my towel go their birthday is actually tomorrow they're gonna be five but we celebrated today because it's a Saturday. And it's just easier to do it that way. So because I'm going to base everything around this lip color, I'm going to do my makeup a little bit in reverse. First, I'm going to... Okay. All right. So I'm going to moisturize my face first. The makeup wipes do kind of dry out my face a little bit. So I always moisturize after using them. Rub it in real good. I think I kind of used more than I needed to. So I'm going to wipe some of it off. Also, I'm going to close this. I like that background better. Okay. Now, do my color primer. I'm gonna do actually my foundation first this time just because I want everything well and you know maybe not maybe I will I'm gonna do my foundation first my eye primer foundation the whole thing because I want to put on the lipstick right away so that I can match it match it with the eyeshadows I haven't used this yet. I wanted to, this morning I wanted to do the Terra Moons makeup because I had that lined up for the week. And that, that blue one was really pretty too. So in the video this morning, I was talking about Kabuki Syndrome a little bit, and I said I would get more into that a little bit later. So my son, who's now 15, um, we knew something was wrong when I was pregnant. He wasn't growing very well. He, um, the doctors told me that they didn't think he was going to survive. They suggested that I should abort, and I wouldn't do it because I was like, I can't, I can't do it. I know people that have made that choice and that's fine. That's a valid choice. But for me, I, I couldn't do it. I've always been strongly pro-life and um, I just couldn't do it. I was like, I'm going to love this baby and take care of him no matter what. And so he was born premature. Um, he didn't really grow. Yeah, it's not a, it doesn't show up very well. He didn't really grow in my belly 
very good. They said he had intrauterine growth restriction and they didn't know why. He had a, a single vessel cord. So they thought that might be why, but it turned out to be not the cause, but part of the syndrome. So we didn't know for the first seven years of his life what he actually had because it's so rare. Look at that, oh, that lights up, that is so cool. It lights up. Uh, he, he couldn't swallow, it went right into his lungs. He is in the hospital his first five weeks. Actually, that's not bad. It's actually not a bad color. I'm pleasantly surprised. Okay. So he um, was in the hospital his first five weeks. They sent him home from the NICU. They said, well, all these issues are just preemie issues and it'll get better. It didn't get better. He couldn't swallow. He couldn't do a lot of like normal stuff. And I already had three other kids that were healthy. So I knew what was kind of normal and what wasn't. I'm gonna use these as bl these blushes. Um, he wasn't putting on weight. I He couldn't breastfeed because the roof of his mouth was not shaped right. So I was pumping milk for him and adding formula to it. But he was still not putting on weight and he was throwing up all the time. Like not just baby spit up, it was like projectile. It was really bad. And then, um, and then he got pneumonia. The pneumonia was from either milk or spit up getting right into his lungs and that was terrifying we almost lost him several times uh, I insisted that they do a feeding tube because I could not get him to eat enough to sustain him and he was getting sick all the time and getting pneumonia and I was like there is way more wrong than preemie issues so he, he, got, he had a feeding tube in his nose and I had to like put that back in all the time. That was really scary. When he was six months, they finally put in a G tube in his tummy. And at first it was a GJ tube that actually went past his tummy. And then we had a Foley bag. We had to drain the um, stomach acid from his stomach and feed him into his intestines because they thought that draining the stomach acid would stop the puking, but it didn't stop the puking. So eventually he had to, I think, it sings. <laughs> eventually he had to have surgery. He had a surgery called Nissen fundoplication. Um, and they basically, they tied his stomach so that he could not physically throw up anymore. Saved his life. They actually found that he had a hernia that they didn't know about. And that hernia by itself could have killed him and that was actually causing the throwing up. So they repaired that because the hernia was, it's called a hiatal hernia. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, and it was behind his esophagus. Um, so they got that fixed and he never, he never started talking. He started having seizures um, at about four months was the first one. And the first one actually may have been a reaction to something. Like he was, he was vaccinated and then he had his first seizure like within a couple hours. And the neurologist actually said this is a vaccine reaction. But either way, he did develop a seizure disorder and over time it's gotten worse. He now has four types of seizures and he's on like five meds and we've gone through so many meds. He's on a special diet. There's just been so many, so many things that he's been through. I'm actually gonna use this contouring. Um, and he he's never been able to walk. He didn't sit up until he was almost two years old. In fact, we, we thought we were going to be done having kids after that because we were terrified. And then, whoopsie, I got pregnant. It was a complete surprise. 
my next one was actually born in our van on the way to the hospital and he was perfectly healthy so we're like okay we can still have the big family we wanted because we have four healthy kids and they told us they at the time they could not find anything wrong in his dna they did not know why he was so sick and they're like we just we don't know so we're like okay so we'll treat the symptoms as they come and we'll figure it out and um basically he they kept telling us oh he's probably not gonna make it to his first birthday he's not gonna make it to his second birthday um everything was touch and go most of his life uh because nobody knew what he had and we didn't know that there was anybody else in the world like him. I reached out on like special needs forums and stuff and I did find other special needs parents that I really connected with, but they were not, it wasn't the same disorder. Like all of the, the parents that I connected with, definitely their kids did not have the same thing. So we went through several like rounds of testing. Could it be this? Could it be that? Um, until he was seven years old and they said, hey, let's do a full DNA analysis. We're going to compare your healthy children, you, your husband, and him, and your disabled child. We're going to compare everybody's DNA and we're going to do a full DNA array. It's going to take like six months. And so we're like, okay, let's do it. Um, and we did, and when she got back to me, she goes, hey, so she calls me and she goes, so we found it. And I was like, oh, that's amazing. Um, they said it's called Kaluki syndrome. And of course I had never heard of it. And immediately I went and checked online and at first I was insanely confused. There's actually two types of Kabuki syndrome. Type one, a lot of the, the people with type one Kabuki syndrome live a fairly normal life. I mean, they're like developmentally dis delayed. They have medical issues and stuff, but they're, you know, live a long life, walking and talking, you know, that sort of thing. And my son was not. So I was kind of, I was confused and devastated. I was like, did I do something wrong? What if we had had a diagnosis sooner? Would he be walking and talking and eating? Then I found out that he actually had type two, which is kind of different. Type two is on the X gene. So, you know, boys only have one X gene and girls have two. So on the X gene, if it, it, a girl with type two will actually be less affected than a boy with type two. So basically, so sorry, where was I? Type two. Um, so type two Kabuki for boys is very severe and also very rare. There are only a handful of boys that we know of in the world that have this disorder. Anyway, um, so as far as I know of, there's like only like 10 or 12 other boys that have been born alive with type 2. So it's really, really rare. Um, it's hard to talk while doing this one. So, and that is not even close to even. Uh, okay, so anyway, so four boys with type 2. He has no immune system. He has a seizure disorder that gets worse and worse all the time as he gets older. Um, uh, he's 15, so right now he's defied expectations. Oh, I need to do the setting spray and mascara before I do that. Anyway, so to recap, um, I kind of forgot where I was. Uh... He, my special needs son, he, he has a wonderful life. He's gone through a lot of struggles. He's a great kid. He's really sweet. Have no idea how long his life is going to be. But 
absolutely committed to making his life the best it can be. Um, he, he has no immune system. He has four types of seizures. Um, he can't eat by mouth. He can't walk. He can't what? talk. Um, yeah, well, I'm done with this makeup look and I'm actually really impressed with this green color. I thought it was going to look like baby poop and it actually looks really nice. So I'll have to talk more about Kabuki syndrome in a later video. It's kind of neat that I ended up doing green um, while talking about Kabuki syndrome because green is the official color of the Kabuki syndrome awareness campaign. So <laughs> pretty cool. And I will talk about it again for sure, especially during um, Kabuki syndrome awareness month, which is in October. So if you have any questions for me about Kabuki syndrome, drop it in the comments below and I will be happy to address it sometime soon.